Viva to the spirit of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. Viva! Viva! Viva to the spirit of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. Viva! Viva! Viva to the spirit of this CSO and youth Beijing plus 30 Africa Review meeting. Viva! Viva! Down with homophobia in Africa. Down! Down! Down with the corrective. Rape of lesbians in Africa down. down. Down with the trafficking, human trafficking and sexual exploitation of the women and girl refugee in Africa down. Down, down with FGM in Africa down. Down, down with GBB in Africa down. Down, down with the Africa that discriminates based on gender down. Down, down with the ongoing secret removal of the original African seed and flooding our market with genetically modified seeds down. down. Forward to an Africa of the seed bank run and managed by women forward. Forward, forward to a non-racial, non-ethnic, non-homophobic, non-sexist, united, prospering, developing, non-supplier um, of raw materials, non-importer of the finished product in Africa that is visa-free. Forward. Forward. Amanda. Amanda. Forward to an Africa where the African Union finally makes up its mind to adopt Iswahili and make it mandatory for all grade one learners as a unifying African language in 12 years to eradicate Spanish, Portuguese, English and French as the African language is forward. Forward. Forward to an Africa where the AU finally makes up its mind to eradicate visas for all AU member states. Forward. Forward to a government in Ethiopia that understands that this is the seat of the AU. Therefore, no AU member state requires a visa to enter Ethiopia. Forward. Amanda. Amanda. Amanda, long live the spirit of the one eye born queen Amanirenas of Nubia, who held Emperor Augustus to a stalemate in war, riding a war elephant. The first time ever the Roman Empire never won a war. Long live, long live the spirit of Yaasandewa, of the Ashante of Ghana, who fought against British colonialism in Ghana forward. Forward to the spirit of Njinga Mbande, of Ndongo and Matamba, who after her country Ndongo was overrun and sacked by the Portuguese, she was left with less than 20 people. She started a new kingdom in Matamba and raised that kingdom from freeing Africans captured into the slave trade by the Portuguese. Matamba rose to be bigger than Ndongo. Long live the spirit of Njinga Mbande, long live. Long live the three progenitors of the Zulu nation. North Shara, three women, Mutani Agaspia, Mutabai Gachama, and Nani Jirapwebe was the long age. Long live. Long live the spirit of Manta D.C. Born to the Bastia family, married into Matopwa. She held Matopwa as rich and green for 20 years during a very difficult period in Southern Africa. Bastardized as the war of the Zulu people, but correct it was the war of state formation. But of uh, one never suffered a single defeat under the yes. region between Manta DC. The first time they were defeated was when the sun took the reins. Long live the spirit of region between Manta DC. Long live. Long live. Long live the spirit of Meanda Nyabasigan, the child of Matoko Hills, who was then for fighting against British colonialism in Zimbabwe. The famous word, Mafupa Amuachamuka, remains a theory on call that is very relevant for the next page in face. A revolutionary theory on call. Her bones rise and rise over days. Long live the spirit of Miranda Jagasila and long live. Long live the spirit of Tatu Betul of Ethiopia. The founder and name of Addis Ababa where we are standing today. Long live. Long live the spirit of Vita Kimba of the Congo with a cave, who was crucified upside down and rendered state 
by the Catholic Church for daring to challenge that Catholicism needs to make sense to the whole. She really wrote the whole Catholicism and put where it was saying through the Catholic Church, she said through the restoration of the Congo Kingdom. Yes. Long live the spirit of Victor Kimba, long live. Long live. long live. long live the spirit of Josina Machel, yes. the symbol of anti-imperialism and anti-colonialism in Mozambique, long live. Long live. Long live. Long live the spirit of Winnie Matigisela Wendela, the icon and symbol of Papa Eddie, long live. Who without education understood and wrote down for us what neoliberalism is. She knew that it's going to be an economic and cultural enslavement which we will struggle to disentangle ourselves from if we ever accept it. Long live the spirit of the Catholic Church, long live. Long live to all the African women who are speaking to us from the grave because we have erased them from the history books. Long live. Rise, African women, rise. Allah, Allah, African women, Allah, Allah. Unite, African women, unite. Amanda. Amanda. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mimi. This is, this is the part where we need to talk about an inspiration from Ken Africanism. Now, can I put a disclaimer? Please don't rush to me to read and say, you didn't call so and so from my country. Yeah. There are so many of these women. That's just proof. So many we have been blotted out of the history books, and Africa has been made patriarchal. So if someone from your country was not called, take it as surely there are many women. Mm. Because we can call them from sunrise to sunset. That's how many they are. We didn't even talk about the Amazons of Dahomey and all female defense force of Dahomey that fought against Portuguese slavery in Dahomey at the time. We haven't even reached there. So if I didn't mention yours, mention them in your heart. <laughs> if there are so many women, why is Africa patriarchal? Why in 30 years all the speakers are saying we are not, not just making progress, we are actually retreating there? I think I was sitting and I was thinking and I was given to golden ways. There's a fundamental difference between independence and liberation. The two are not the same. Independence you are giving. That's why there's a date and time for it. Portugal will say we gave up all our independence on this day. The Brits will say we gave up Zimbabwe independence on the 18th of April, 1980. So independence is an occasion. Independence is something you dress up to. It's a function. And that's why every year we celebrate it. It's an occasion. Liberation is different. Liberation is that that says what was Africa before Africa was Africa. See, independence happens this way. On the 17th of April, it goes for all of you, I just chose Zimbabwe because I was reminded when it is. On the 17th of April, all Zimbabwe slept as a British colony. Are you aware? And then on the 18th, the colonial administrator takes down the flag, he holds the oars, you have a national anthem, you have a new coat of arms, and then voila, we are told we are independent. It doesn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. Colonialism was planned for four years, yes. 1884 to 1886. You know, whenever we say the Berlin Conference, I think it was a one hour meeting. It was a four year meeting. And they kept meeting. They are still meeting today yes. under something called the Bilderberg Meeting, which brings together about 200 captains of industry. That's what they're called, male and female. It's an all white meeting where all that matter attends, that runs. Now, if that's how it is, how then would you sleep? And then tomorrow, you are free. When did you decolonize? In your sleep. They are very active in planning it. So how is decolonization happening in a sleep overnight? You wake up and you are declared that you are free. See, liberation is that which asks. I'm not going to say it in a show of hands, because I don't want to embarrass you. 
But I want to ask this question. Who amongst us has dared to look at Africa in a period that the West classifies as antiquity? Or when they say antiquity, it's a period that does not exist for them because the first white empire, which is the Greek empire, had not come onto the force. Remember Nubia is 11, in 11,000 BCE. Remember they were counting down. So in 11,000 years BCE, Nubia was fully fledged. In 3,500, Kemen comes up. In 800 only BCE, we see the Greek empire come onto the planet. So all that period, they don't count. They say it's antiquity because they didn't exist and it doesn't mean anything for them. Now, who amongst you has even dared to look at Africa in that they call it antiquity? Or to look at it in BCE, before the common era, before Christ or Christians? Because if you dare, that is liberation. Because if you dare, you realize that we are not moving on gender because we are running on somebody's agenda. Patriarchy was never African. If you look at us that time, you will realize that Africa championed what I've called a floating. You know something that floats on former navy. So something that floats means there's no anchor. If you want something to be stable, let's say put an anchor and sit. If it's floating, so we ran a floating gender construct. We ran a fluid gender construct. How did we do that? Because gender construct is always is always informed by your belief system. Now, in Africa, you can look at all the originators, speak to Zimbabweans. Moari, you go to Moari and you say the rest that one, if you are looking for a favor. But if you want to go for something macho, you take ten Moari and say the bearded one. It's the same Moari. Now, we never had an originator whose gender was proclaimed. All our diets reflect both sexes. So are the ancestors. So there is no way you would have rocked up with patriarchy as a gender construct. Now, how is it maintained? Just two minutes. How do we maintain it? We maintain it through a very golden thing called custom and law. I want to, I'm giving you a homework. Go back and check when was custom and law introduced in your country. I know in mine, it was introduced by two people, father and son, the two Shakespeare's. They even named the town after them. They say in their own writing, we kept toying and writing and it kept changing, but we made sure in the final declaration, three things don't change. Now, please listen. First one, the man is the head of the house. Two, therefore the children, the woman and the children are the property of them. Three, therefore inheritance shall be by the first one male. That's custom and law. It's not ours. Cut a long story short, they are harassing me. Custom and law was first written by the British in India, and then it was transplanted first to Nigeria under Lugat as an experiment, and then it was taken to all other British colonies. The French and the Portuguese copied it from them. Custom and law is what made a woman to be destitute when the husband dies. And the family comes and they say, it is customary law that has produced from Ghana 1957 to today, it's exactly 57 years. It's customary law that has produced in Africa only three female presidents. And you know they are all by default. None of it was learned. Somebody died for Joyce Banda to pop up. Somebody, Magafuli, was killed for the current one to pop up. They say not Liberia was a, an election, it was not. The Liberian men had run such an atrocious war where they would put an AK-47 through the vagina of the women and fire it. Those young boys were eating human liver. It was so bad and messy, they needed a woman to come and salvage and pick up the mess. And that's how Johnson popped up. Now, they are saying I must choose. Now, in closing, it looks to me like if we are looking at the next phase of the implementation of Beijing, we need to, we need to criminalize customer law. Because it's a tool. It's an enabler. That's what we're going to If we don't criminalize it and move, then we are not moving. Two, we need to focus on running workshops for African men. They are the ones who have taken and swallowed patriarchy. Mm -hmm. Because if they did not, we would not be here. 
So when we are running workshops for women and I love it, we need to look at the men. I'm almost done, just a minute. The third thing we need to do is to start focusing on equity. You can't have equality without equity. If you have equity, equality pops up on its own. So this focus on passing laws on equality, but the structural and systemic inequality, that inequality caused by equity, mm. we are not focusing on it. The last thing we need to focus on as we go to the next phase is to make sure that we eradicate business. It's not a joke. We can't talk about African free trade. How do you expect the woman that made this in South Africa to come and stand for five hours in Ethiopia to come and meet another woman from the market here? Who's even going to give them $55 today at the airport? So we can't start talking the free trade agreement until feminists, because I've been saying it to the text justice movement, whoever, I'm glad that you are here, my sister from Akina Mama. I'm glad feminists is here. It needs to be a feminist war. We need to declare war on visa within eight states and we need to criminalize it. I think I'll leave it at that. And I hope that uh, the four things shall not be forgotten. Amanda! Amanda! Viva African women, viva! Viva! Viva feminine, 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 viva Yes.